Hi guys, it's Julia at the Mother Ranch. Before you get started, I want you to go and check out the description below. If you're on a phone, it looks a little bit like this. And if you look right next to the title, you'll see in, in the example here, there is a red star. It's not really there. I'm trying to highlight that little down arrow. Click on that down arrow, and then you'll get to the description. And the description shows, as you can see on this image, um, where the free PDF is, where the supply video is, uh, where the tracing video is. If you're on a computer, it looks like this. Also look for the red star. So first you're gonna go, if you've not seen the, the supply video yet, go check that out and see what you need to get for this class. Um, then make sure you click on the free PDF link, which is your tracing image and then check out the tracing video. And that's like three minutes long, it's super short. Again, this is if, if you've not done one of these classes before. Then come back here and we will start this class together. Your next step is to take your Micron pen. I typically use the 01 size and trace your entire artwork, your pencil drawing with this waterproof black pen. When you're done with that, either leave it for a little bit to dry or pop it in a low oven. Mine goes down to about 150. And let, make sure it's fully dry before you start the next step. You made it back. Okay, are you ready? It is time to mix colors. So if you remember, this is a watercolor class. You may also use acrylic paint or you can use craft paint. I am using Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolors. So to get these colors, typically I have to mix. So the first one is a yellowish orange. Um, if you're mixing watercolor, then take your yellow and add just a smidge, just a smidge of orange to it, just to warm it up a little bit. Then pink, after that is green, honestly any color green. As you watch this video, you'll see it started off kind of a grassy green and ended up being kind of a mint green as time went on. Then blue and turquoise and purple. I like to mix my colors before I even get the paper wet, that way I'm all ready when the paper is completely wet, I can just start painting right away. If you live somewhere dry, like I do in Colorado, then by the time you're done mixing paint, your paper will start drying off already. So it's just easier to get the paint ready and, and then start with the uh, wetting the paper. And one more thing before I forget, as you're painting, I may end up putting little bits of information written on the screen. And having taught these classes in person, I realize a lot of time, most of the time, people will have their heads down, doing the things they're doing, and they're not, of course, watching the screen step by step. So I will be adding this sound of bubbles. And that way you know to look up for a moment and see you what it is that I am mentioning that might help you out. All right, we're going to start this watercolor with a big wash of water. So I'm using a big brush here. Um, it makes it go a little faster, and unless of course your brush tends to shed bristles like this one does. So um, yeah, you just have to pull those off. Or maybe you have dog hair mixed in. Ha <laughs> ha, I also have that. Um, you could also use, really, even just a one inch brush would be fine. I'm gonna start dropping in the color. So I'm using a uh, pink. All of these colors are T consistency. So a pink on this little right hand goat. Both of these goats are um, girl goats. You, of course, can use 
these are my goats and they were sisters. Um, of course, you could use any color you would like. Maybe they're boy goats in your world. Maybe they're one of each in your world. So pink, and then I'm adding a little bit of turquoise and those two colors will blend a little bit, get a little bit of a purplish color. And I'm not being specific in where I'm putting the color. If you've done any of my other classes, you know that I like to um, let the colors bleed outside of the outlines. So the little left goat, I'm adding some purple. just a tiny bit of this grass green. So that's going to mix with the blue just fine, but not as well with the pink. I usually start off knowing what colors I'm going to use, but not particularly where I'm going to be putting them. And here's some yellow. It's very bright. This is actually a fairly um, opaque yellow, so opaque or transparent. Transparent, of course, you can see through, and opaque, you can't as much. It's a little bit of kind of yellow with a tiny bit of red mixed into it, so it's a little bit more orange. Now I'm going to add some turquoise again. I wanted to brighten up the areas that I had already done. regular blue, just kind of a medium blue. Of course, that blue and purple will mix together nicely. The blue and the yellow will mix together just fine. Um, in the right-hand goat, the blue and the pink will be fine. It'll be a little purpley. The blue and the turquoise, of course, are fine. A little bit more yellow on this right hand goat. And a little bit into the left hand goat too. And you see each time I wipe my, my brush on that little piece of paper towel on the bottom right corner of your screen. I do that before I rinse it. That way my water stays a little bit more clean. I don't have to change it quite as often if I get the majority of the paint out first. Some more turquoise. And again, remember, it's no big deal if it goes outside the lines. See how that right goat right now I love how the paint has bled out in like a halo around that right-hand side goat. It just kind of makes me happy. Back to the turquoise. So working a little bit into these tree trunks, all the places that you've added all the extra pin work, those little tiny fine lines, those are the shadow pieces. And so I'm going ahead, everything is still wet here with the water, and I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of the blue, a little bit of purple, some of those more shadowy colors into those areas where there's a lot of that th uh, thin pin work, where the shadows are, and also where you can see 
um, when, where the tree trunk has been cut, there's a lot of cracks in that tree trunk. This is actually on my property. These trees are came from um, some cottonwoods that we cut down uh, when we first moved in. They were great big and really, really falling apart, about 40 years old. And so they've been here for a few years now. And we've only been on this property four years. And so um, there's a lot of dry cracks in those cut ends, which is why they look like that instead of like circles. Just a little bit of shadowing. It's no big deal if it bleeds. That's kind of the point, right? And darkening up some of the other areas as I see, hmm, I want this little area here to be darker. Go with your gut. Adding a little bit more purple to this little goat. It's no big deal if the paint bleeds into the eye area because we're gonna use opaque um, watercolor or if you depending on what you're using um, we're going to use we're, we're going to cover that up so don't worry about it Just little smidges of yellow. I'm gonna leave a little bits of these goats white. You can see on that right hand goat that she's got a little white spot on the center of her head. And actually the left hand goat does too, but you can't see that one. All right, some brown, just a medium warm brown. Tea consistency. And this is going to be put in on the, the trunks and it's gonna bleed into the other areas. No big deal, this is all okay. Just spreading that color around here on that left-hand tree trunk. one as well. I'm kind of just putting puddles of color in and then I'm just spreading it around. And if it gets a little dry I add a little tiny bit of water. Don't have to rinse your brush out just add a little bit of water. Don't worry about the purple and the brown mixing together it's no big deal. It's preferred as a matter of fact. So this far right section is a little bit dry. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to help spread that around up a little tiny bit more color if you need it. And you can see the paper is more dry now and so the tree trunk area isn't spreading really beyond its edges and that's okay. I kind of, if it, if it spreads it's okay and if it doesn't it's all right. All right so here I've gone ahead and put it in the oven and we're starting, so it dries, and then we're starting fresh. Again, you can tell that it's much drier here. So if you wanna go ahead and put it in the oven, pause here, and then we're gonna start back with a dry paper. So 
on here I'm adding some blue just kind of punching up the color a little bit in places it's a little too pastel -y for me so I want to make it a little bit darker blue oh, this might actually be purple now that I'm looking at it yeah that's purple but blue would be fine too <laughs> So just darkening up and giving the goat's form a little bit more shape with the um, with this color and then it's also not wet and wet like we were doing before this is wet on dry so the paint isn't going to bleed So find your purple areas, or whatever color you're going to start with, and just punch that color up just a little bit, a little bit brighter. You can do lots of layers with uh, watercolor or water-based paint in general. The great thing about watercolor is if you decide you're going to um, you know, let it air dry and you're going to go off and have dinner and go to bed and you're going to come pick it up the next morning or whatever. Um, all you have to do to reconstitute uh, watercolor is add water and there's no waste. Um, acrylic paint and craft paint, you can try covering it with maybe some plastic wrap, something like that, and that'll work for a little bit, but eventually it's going to dry. Sometimes it's days before I come back and it's been really, really nice to be able to just have the colors that I was using there and add some water and get going again. I, it's, there's just no waste. So with the yellow, yellow with a little tiny bit of red, so it's slightly towards the orange side. Again, just punching up the color wherever you think it needs it. I'm leaving the outside of the goat alone, letting that be the, the kind of halo effect around the goats. little bits of green. And turquoise and blue, whatever colors you're using. Just darken up some of these areas. So underneath that goat, there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow. So make that part a little darker. These little goats, that's sparkles on the left and marbles on the right. They come from one of my favorite does. A doe is a girl goat, a doe and a buck. And so these two, as little baby girls, are called doelings. Isn't that cute? Doelings and bucklings when they're babies. My friend Katie actually 
bought Sparkles, who's on the left, and is boarding her here with a few of her other goats that she's bought for me in the past. And little Marbles is also staying. She's mine. They ended up being very pretty little goats. And of course, coming from one of my favorite does, I needed to have one of her babies. So in a couple years, if you keep an eye on the Mother Ranch page or on my YouTube channel, um, you'll see that one on the right way anyway, Marbles will be having her own babies in a few years from now. We had 12 um, little babies this year and it was hard to make a decision, you guys. Hard to figure out the one I was gonna keep. I'm still just darkening up color. Figuring out how I want it to look. So this year we are breeding six of our does. We're going to do three for March births. <laughs> well, that was annoying. Three for March births and three for June births. And so if you want to help us figure out which girl goats to breed to which boy goats, go and look on the YouTube channel and you'll see a okay just adding some more orange here so you'll see um, a video by that name help us choose you can put your comments in the comment section and let me know if you have any ideas we've got some really really cute goats this time and um, and some pretty baby some pretty boys as well to breed to Got our new little boy Hart has uh, some good milk stars in his line, so we're excited about that. And for those of you who don't know, that just means he has good milking genetics. Adding some pink in here. I love how that back left leg is looking. Letting a little bit of the pink bleed into that little bit of blue there, so it's creating a, a different shade. Different shade, kind of a, well, it's pink, but it has a little bit of purple tinge to it. these ears some definition.
You'll see me adding just some kind of short choppy lines with those turquoise pieces. Starting to hint at a little bit of the fur. We'll be adding in um, with the black pen at the end, the waterproof pen at the end as well to give a little bit more definition to the fur. Some much darker paint in there now. I like I said, I don't have a lot of plans about what colors I'm putting where, and so as I go, I realize oh, I just really want that to be darker. I want that little section to be darker. I'll get a couple layers on and think, no, nope, still a little bit darker, which is what that back right leg of that right uh, left hand goat is just it just needs to be darker it's kind of a feel it's i'm not going by any rules and you don't have to either short strokes as I said before just kind of giving some little suggestions of fur So these are little short, thin strokes with um, some of that purple or whatever shadowy, darker color that you have. Mixing up some brown. And your tree chunks don't have to have normal colors at all. So this is kind of a more gold brown. Just going to fill in that whole eye area. Trying to go around the pupil just a little bit. We will go in and fix that.
Make sure you let those the paint dry in the eye before you do anything else though because if you try to go ahead and put the pupil in now when it's wet um, it will just bleed bleed into uh, the gold color just little bits of more definition little tiny short strokes. When you're making these little short strokes like I am right now around her face, uh, that left hand goat's face, then you're the tiniest bit pushing down with the brush and lifting up and out. And that creates a thinner line on the end. a little bit more of that kind of medium tan decided I wanted just a little bit of natural color in these goats as well just a tiny bit you don't have to You do you. <laughs> Using that flicking motion again, especially around the edges, pushing down with the brush and lifting up and out away from away from that gives you that fine line all right so following some of these lines in the tree trunk with kind of a medium warm brown when I say warm I mean it has just a tiny bit of red in it something to warm it up Just starting to do some give some more definition to this tree trunk so follow just all you have to do is follow those lines if you have some little more squiggles to put around there that's fine too that's what I'm doing here just adding a little bit more you don't have to be precise you kind of realize okay there's some squiggly lines there I will make some squiggly lines there if you don't follow them directly on top of the line that's okay That was a little too dark there, so I'm going back and blotting out some of that color. If you just dry your brush off, if you're using the same color, you just dry your brush off and put your place your brush into that place where it's too wet, it's kind of a puddle, um, then the brush just sucks it up. It's 
kind of like erasing. So here I'm just darkening the lines more, the lines of the uh, stump, stumps, adding little bits of color. Right now it's just brown. Using more of a milk consistency to darken up these darker areas of brown that I'm putting in now. Just little lines, all kind of random all over the place. A little bit darker underneath that goat. Somewhat following the lines that I've got, that I put down with the ink earlier. But you can see it's not, I'm not being real precise. Just adding a little bit more here and there. Letting the brush kind of skip over the paper. If you're using the same um, cold press watercolor paper that I am, it's easy to let the paintbrush skip. Just hold it very lightly. Not a lot of paint on the brush and um, just drag it down. using more of the shadow color, whatever that is for you. For me, it's some blue, a little bit of purple. You could even mix your own gray if you would like. That's, um, that's a pretty easy process. Just use some blue and some brown. Mix it together on your palette first if you're using watercolor and you'll get a gray. And if you want a little bit more, you'll see it's either a brown gray or a blue gray. Add a little bit of the opposite to, to get it to more of a neutral gray. Of course, you can also buy gray. Going back in and adding a little bit more of the amber color to the eyes. There, I mix a little bit of darker gray. It's pretty dark, just to add a little tiny bit of the detail for the side of the hooves. I'm 
course, we're not doing on this left-hand goat. We're only doing these three because that left front leg is on the other side of the stump. So you don't see that piece. a little bit of shading to her little white spot on the top of her head and a little bit into the other white areas just to give some detail of the fur in that area. So I'm using a little bit of a um, kind of a bluish gray in that color. Keep darkening the shadows of the stump until it feels right to you. You could definitely go a lot darker. You don't have to go as dark. This is very much a tea consistency bit of paint here. Just adding in a little bit of gray marks to the shadow areas. being very careful not to touch the front right edge of the left hand stump. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm darkening the right hand stump where, where it's meeting the left hand stump. So I'm just being careful so my edges are clean on that left hand stump. And as we go on, it'll be more and more clear that those are two different pieces of wood. I'm adding that blue and brown again together, kind of a warm brown and a mid-tone blue, which gives a nice gray. Now this area is already a little bit damp because I just put some paint there, so it's Adding some more brown to that gray. A 
like I said, these tree stumps are about four years old, don't have any bark left on them. And being in Colorado where we are, um, they are dry and sun bleached. This is putting some dark on that section there just makes that piece recede. Adding some more blue to that, to that brown, brown grayish mixture. A little bit more blue to get um, here. I'm looking for a darker gray. I'm going to go pretty dark milk consistency, so it's a little tiny bit thicker. Pretty dark on those, those last two little shadows. This little piece over here on the edge. Darken up a little bit of lines and along the edge of this stump here. Again, being careful not to get into that left-hand stump. You can see how precise I'm being here. Adding a little bit of water so I can spread out this darker section. All right, now you're really starting to be able to tell the difference between the right hand stump and the left hand stump. Continuing to darken those shadows. I have a few of these goat pictures now with the various stumps they like to climb on in their in their um, play area and I really like to paint them. I love how they turn out. I love the colors that you can put into them and still let them look natural. Just kind of fun for me. Hopefully they'll be fun for you too.
adding some darker gray to those darker, deeper parts of the wood where the wood actually, it's like a little crevasse. And now I'm just kind of skipping paint all over this section. It's not precise work at this point. There's only a few places that I'm super, super careful around the different edges. But other than that, I'm just skipping paint on here, kind of lightly brushing it on. I don't have a really full wet brush. Add a little bit of shadow underneath this little goat around its little feet. Kind of anchors that little goat to the to the wood. Being more precise around this edge. And then again, just darkening up the shadows. I can remember when I was a kid, I had this passion. I was probably about fifth or sixth grade, maybe. And I used to love to draw dead trees. I wish I had some of those drawings. I'm sure they were hideous, but <laughs> I can remember thinking, oh, that looks really good. And dead ones. I could never get the leaves right as a kid, but dead trees was always fun to me. And apparently now at 51, they're still fun for me. <laughs> All right, a little tiny bit of that darker paint. Go around the edge of the eye just to give it some definition. The outer edge. And if you want, you can go, oh, some little eyelashes here. If you want, go online and look at kind of the shape of a goat eye. The, not just the shape of the eyeball, but the shape around the goat eye. So some little tiny eyelashes. Here I'm just adding little bits of whiskers. Goats have whiskers, kind of like dogs and cats and horses. They all have whiskers around their mouths. So I'm adding some longer little bits of eyelashes again with that flicking motion of the paintbrush. And then around the edges of, of the back end of this right goat along its back. Just using that kind of darker gray paint or whatever color you'd like. Something darker is what I'm using though. Just some little suggestions of hair. Adding some little hairs onto the ends of the ears. And in real life, they don't have hair like that on the ends of their, on the tips of their ears. Their hair doesn't, doesn't stick up like that, but obviously in real life, they're also not patchwork pastel colors either, are they? <laughs> we can do what we want. So if you like little hairs on the end of their ears like this one is, then go for it. that darker gray paint. Sometimes it's easier to turn your painting sideways. That way I'm pulling toward me, which can make it easier to do certain areas, those real fine details like that. So I'm starting to get into the outlining process here. And I'm doing it right now with um, a smaller brush. I believe this is a number two, a number two round, I think. Yeah. And, um, but you can also do this with a pen. It gives you a lot more control and might be easier if you're not comfortable doing it with a brush. If you are doing it with a brush, 
This is uh, milk consistency paint, so that kind of middle between tea and cream. And I'm just adding kind of some outlines to these goats. This style of painting, not the washy halo effect in the background, but the watercolor with the black outlines or the outlining is called lime and wash. And after many years, it's still my most favorite. Back when I was painting with colored pencil, it, I did a, I, I would do like a mixed media style. So I would use um, colored India ink as, as the colored piece and, um, and then black ink to do that outside edges. So still kind of that same look. This was before I was doing watercolor. Still kind of the same look. Well, it is the same look. It just, um, but with watercolor, it's called line and wash. I've always loved well-illustrated children's books, and I suppose this reminds me of that a lot. So going into even some of the painted areas, not just the edges, but even a little bit of the painted areas, I'm just adding little, again, little bits of the black. And again, you can use this, you can do this with pen. And at this point, you don't really have to worry well, I'd still use waterproof pen if I were you. I still would because you might decide at some point you want to go back and add a little bit more paint and you really don't want that black. If you have a, um, if you're using a non-waterproof pen and, you, and the water hits it when you want to add a different, a little bit more color, you're going to be so sad. So find yourself some of those Micron pens. That's been my favorite so far. I know there are others, but that's been my favorite so far. a little bit more paint so that's kind of a blue gray and pretty dark going along this edge again I really want to differentiate and make that front log pop Okay, so this is Artist Squash. It's G-O-U-A-C-H-E, and it is opaque, so not see-through, opaque watercolor. Just adding a tiny, tiny bit of water so I can get this to flow a little bit. You can also use white craft paint, white acrylic paint, um, those jelly rolls, I don't know if you've seen those, G-E-L-L-Y, they are white ink pens, white ink pens. I'll, along with all of the other stuff, put a link in the description for those. And any of that stuff will work. Um, usually you have to go over it a few times maybe twice, um, even with uh, the gouache. I'm 
I'm just adding a, a bit of highlight detail to some parts of the stump. And then little tiny bits in the color. Little short scruffy brush strokes to suggest fur in the goats. So on the stumps, I'm putting this white in, little white lines in where there is um, not a lot of color. It's just kind of that, you know, flat beige. At this point, I'm just kind of skipping all over wherever I see it. As I see it is where I put it. I just like the way it looks to add just a little bit of white to this, a little bit of highlights. Um, in the fur and then on the stumps as well. white right along those beige areas that don't have any any color other than beige little lines uneven they're not straight right along this edge again to make it stand out against that right hand stump It's always fun to watch things come forward and recede in paintings as you add darker and lighter. Adding just a little bit of darker pink to this left-hand goat. short choppy strokes of the blue get a little bit thicker more milk consistency so it, the color is really bright and that's again if you're using watercolor if you're using um, acrylic or craft paint then you just need to choose a little bit darker color all right so here are my favorite pens currently anyway the microns waterproof Giving a little detail to the eyes, around the face. You 
remember if you're having a hard time with say those eyelashes turn your painting around so you're pulling down toward you which makes it a lot easier filling in a little bit of the pupil so it's nice and dark in their eye both of their eyes If you can hear squawking, that's because the guineas are outside. I have a set of nine guinea birds, guinea hens. I guess they're guinea hens and guinea cocks, I suppose, technically. And they are strange little creatures. But they're great for eating ticks and bugs. Some people like them because they're such good alarm birds. They really let you know if something's going on at the farm that suddenly they're all screeching at the same time. They're typically pretty talkative, so if you can hear them, this is what they, that's what they sound like most of the time, just kind of chatty. But when they get startled by something, then they really get going. They raise quite the racket. So typically with these micron pins, for the edges I would use a 0 .01, whatever works for you is fine of course. I would say my most common, most common size, two sizes I use are a 0 .01 and a 0 .005 and I will link to both of those in the description. The 0 .005 is much smaller and it's nice to be able to do eyelashes and really fine little details maybe there, especially this painting because it's smaller and has two animals in it. So the spaces around their faces, their little nostrils and their mouths, um, I often use the smaller 0 .005 pin. Again, that little flicking motion that we talked about with the paintbrush is also useful with pens. You can't really push down with a pen the way you can a paintbrush to give a thicker base, but you can lift up, drag it out and lift up and out um, away, from, away from the little hair that you're drawing and that gives that thinner edge of the hair on the end. taking a very tiny brush and putting in just a tiny bit of highlight above the black pupil. And it's actually pretty hard to see in this exactly what that looks like. But when you do it, just a little tiny dot of a highlight in their eye, it really makes a huge difference to bringing the eyes alive. Realizing I added a little tiny bit too much white, so I'm just putting a little tiny bit of black back into the pupil. one of my other smaller palettes that I have and the colors are a little bit different than my than this palette on the right I actually have so when I paint these um, I paint them with no sound 
and then I go back and do a voiceover. It's just easier. And so now I actually have a different palette that I really like a lot. I will also link that in the description. because It has a huge, um, a huge mixing area. Again, this is for watercolor. If you're using acrylic or craft paint, then honestly, when I used to do that, I would just, um, I just use paper plates, styrofoam plates or paper plates. I preferred styrofoam even though they weren't great for the environment because they don't soak up the water. Those coated paper plates work pretty well too, those heavier ones. Just darkening just a tiny bit, little tiny bits of lines. And adding just a tiny bit of blue into, into the stumps. And you can see I'm not doing it all over the place, just here and there, just to give the stumps a little bit more color. As with anything, nothing is ever just beige or um, white. Like if you're gonna do snow, snow is never just white. It's amazing when you really start looking at it. Huh, look at all that color in there, who knew? Last fall, we painted our house yellow it's kind of a warm, buttery yellow, so not super lemony. And now when it snows, when it snowed this past winter, there are, depending on how the light's hitting and stuff, sometimes the snow looks yellow <laughs> just because it's reflecting, the house is reflecting on it. bit more of this dark yellow slightly orange color tiny tiny bits in here Just a tiny bit, warming these stumps up just a little bit. They were looking a little too gray to me. Going into some of the lighter areas and adding just a smidge of yellow. little uneven lines. You can see I'm not adding a ton, but already it looks a little bit warmer. Just darkening a little tiny bit more. 
getting down to the end now, guys. This is where you'll see me pausing a lot. And, you know, I've got my paintbrush in my hand. I'm looking at it. Mm, where else do I want? Just a little bit of this color or a little bit of darkening or a little bit of lightening. Sometimes stopping and walking away works. You come back and you're like, oh, oh, look at that. And it becomes super obvious. Sometimes people will turn their paintings upside down, as long as they're not wet. Turn their paintings upside down and um, look at them like that for a while and then turn them right, back, right side up and, and then suddenly it's super obvious where things are, where the problem areas are or where you need to darken or lighten or add some different color. Typically, I just walk away. If I can't quite figure it out and it's taking me, I'm, I'm sitting there with my paintbrush in my hand and can't quite figure out what to do next, I typically just walk away for a little bit, go find something else to do, go visit the goats, go find something else to do, and come back. And then usually I see, the, see, see where I want to add a little bit. So this is that really, really kind of dark blue-gray Gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more color. adding a fairly large, in the grand scheme of things, fairly large little area of um, white in that spot. Mixing a little bit of that kind of gold brown. I wanted to get just a little bit more color in here. blending it into the edges there. Still wanting to warm up the stumps just a little bit more. the highlights with this uh, white gouache.
you've ever seen stumps like this, there are just, you know, like I said before, a lot of cracks in them. Um, but that means that the, the outside edges are going to be pretty light. Inside the cracks is darker, outside edges are lighter. Getting a little bit of water in the pink and a little bit of water in that yellow. And it's time for splattering. So I'm using a little bit bigger paintbrush, but a four or a six round would work too. And using using the colors in the goats, I'm just using my hand to kind of whack it, to whack the paintbrush against. So I'm using some pink because that's what's in the goats. Got some yellow because they're in the goats too, some turquoise. Choose a few of those colors or all of those colors if you want. And Load up that paintbrush. If you're using acrylic or or um, craft paint, get a little bit watery than more watery than what you'd expect than what it comes out of the out of the tube. So it's about milk consistency. And whap that paintbrush against your hand. <laughs> Also, while I'm doing that, you can see I'm covering up the goats. I don't mind if a little bit gets on there. Letting a little bit of the splatter get over on the stumps as well. Sometimes I just let it go anywhere, and sometimes I use my hand to cover up different areas. If I'm being really specific, like I really don't want um, maybe the splatter to get on their eyes, especially if it's a bigger goat, um, and I've taken some time with the eyes and I want them to look a certain way, then I use a little piece of paper or a post-it or whatever um, to cover that area and then that that keeps the, the splatter off of that area. You can try a toothbrush. This is not my favorite method. I don't mind the way it looks because it's uh, closer together splatters. And that's kind of neat. But 
you know, paint is not something you really want all over you. So I have to go wash my hands after that. You could use a glove, that would help. Um, like a rubber glove or whatever, or a, I don't know, you know, those little uh, nitro gloves or whatever. adding just my signature. And the date. And I had decided while I was painting this what the name of it was going to be, Queen of the Mountain. I guess because they're so young, it should be Princess of the Mountain. <laughs> So you take this tape off, be very careful with it. Angle it slightly away from the painting. And this is a watercolor block and so that means it's glued um, all the way around the edges. It just leaves a little tiny opening for you to just take a palette knife or a you know, plastic knife, whatever, um, so you can open it up and get that page off the top. I like blocks a lot. The only reason I use tape is to create that nice white edge. It's a little bit of a matte effect on it. The final details you may or may not want to add are inside these black circles on the screen. So the little spirals um, on the goat on the left, that, that little spiral on the hip, there's a little heart on its foot. Um, let's see what else. No, just spirals and hearts on this. And then those flowers. The leaves, as you can see, are just nothing, right? They're just a stroke. So it's one of those flicking strokes. You push down a little bit and as you're pulling away, you're lifting up and that creates the finer tip of a leaf. And the same goes with the flowers. It's the same kind of stroke that we've been doing all along. So if you'd like to try those, give them a try. And once you're done, um, go in and using your uh, Micron marker, just put some little suggestions of lines around them to give them a little bit of detail and you're done. Maybe a little, a few little squiggles and swirls and things around, um, around those flowers and that's it. It's pretty simple. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you send me um, a picture. I would love to see what you guys are doing. So uh, the next class is Friday, October 16th, and it's of this little fuzzy foal. And is there anything else about that? It's going to be a shorter class because uh, there's just one, one creature in it. This one was a little bit longer than, than my others because there were two little goats in it. But um, this will be simple enough with, with just the single, the single foal in this painting. So mark it on your calendar, Friday, October 16th, and I will see you then. 
If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Mother Ranch channel. Then hit the little bell to receive notification of new videos. I create free art classes every month and weekly videos of what it's like to live on a ranch with all of our beautiful animals. Have a great weekend, everyone.